a real pumpkin? Yes, it's a real pumpkin with glitter dust on it. <laughs> you never know. I wonder what kind of pumpkin seeds are inside of a glitter dust oh, pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin seeds. We've heard <laughs> rave reviews about that. Have Welcome. you tried the pumpkin seed recipe yet from last week? I tried it twice. We had garlic parmesan tuscan, Ooh. and then we had honey cinnamon, which aren't, aren't it's a little too much honey. They're kind of glopped wow. together, but very good. As we welcome you to Faith and Friends, almost the middle of November. We're still thinking pumpkins, but you might be thinking about Thanksgiving, which is coming up very soon, of course, and pumpkin pie. Don't forget about Veterans Day, November 11th, Veterans Day, and we're all very thankful for our veterans for their service. Well, we are excited about today's show. We have a very special guest in the studio, national apologetics author and speaker Alex McFarlane. You may have heard him on Fox News or American Family Radio. Well, today he's with us right here in the TV44 studios. Also coming up today, Temple Christian School recently inducted their second group into the National Honor Society. And we visit with Parkway grad Jordan Thompson, currently with the Detroit Lions. But first, we start with our scripture verse. It comes from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verses 3 through 8. And Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. For such things must happen, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Well, national speaker and author Alex McFarlane recognizes that everyday Christians of all ages are dealing with many of the things described in those verses. He is the author of several books on Christian apologetics, including 10 Issues That Divide Christians and the 21 Toughest Questions Your Kids Will Have About God and Christianity. Zach is with Alex, who joins us here in the TV44 studios. Well, thank you, Mark. You may have also heard him on Explore the Word on your radio. He is the director of the Center for Christian Worldview and Apologetics at North Greenville University. And we are thrilled to have Alex McFarlane with us. Alex. Thank you so much for being on with us. Well, thank you, Zach. It's an honor to be here. Glad to have you. One thing that we left off your resume that we just learned the other night, quite the bass player, I understand, joining the Christian band, well, or the church band there. I love music. <laughs> it was an honor to sit in for one night. Well, we've uh, certainly enjoyed the different topics that you've covered, and we're going to briefly go over those um, here shortly. But first, um, apologetics in general. Uh, yeah. Something that maybe as Christians we hear addressed or maybe hear the word quite a bit, maybe don't fully grasp um, the importance of it or really the definition. So let's go over that. Apologetics, what is the mission of apologetics and why is it important in our Christian world today? Great question. Apologetics means to defend the faith, really to explain why we believe what we believe. And it's a biblical word. You know, it's found in the New Testament in about half a dozen places. Uh, probably the most well-known verse is 1 Peter 3.15, which says, Be ready always to give an answer to everyone who asks a reason <laughs> for the hope that you have. So when we explain you know, why God is real or how do we know the Bible is true or how do we know Jesus really is authentic, that's apologetics. Um, let me explain what it's not. It's not apologizing. <laughs> it, you know, it's not saying, oh, I'm sorry for being a Christian, you know, mm -hmm. please, please like me anyway. <laughs> no, it's not apologizing, but it means to speak in defense of. Okay, and yeah. so that's something that we hear and maybe aren't sure how to go about doing. And so yeah. what are some, um, we, we of course will go over the topics, but some of the basis is, basics to apologetics that kind of equip us to do that. Great question. You know, really, apologetics um, goes all the way back to the early church. Uh, the New Testament, uh, as I mentioned, 1 Peter 3.15 and, and a number of other verses. Um, there's a verse in the little book of Jude, Jude mm. verse 3, that says that Christians are to earnestly contend for the faith or defend the faith. If you read in the book of Acts, Paul would, uh, it says in like Acts 9.17 that Paul was... Um, speaking, alleging, and proving that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior. So when we think of, of three things, present, explain, defend. Hmm. Sometimes we present the gospel. Um, Christ died for our sins. Often we have to explain what that means, that you know God loves us, we're sinners, but we're valuable to God. Christ came from heaven, lived a sinless life, rose from the grave. But more and more in, in our culture, especially over the last couple of decades, we find ourselves um, 
as a church, we no longer have home court advantage. Hmm. You know, th th there was a day when America was so thoroughly predisposed to Christianity right. that, you know, if you talk about um, Moses and Abraham sacrificed Isaac and King David and uh, Palm Sunday and the Gospels, I mean, people understood, but more and more, uh, increasingly, people don't, they're, they're unfamiliar with these terms. Uh, and so we've got to present, we've got to explain, and more and more we have to defend. Hmm. There's also the rise of atheism that we've seen in the last really five to ten years. And now, uh, it's interesting, after a couple of hundred years of roughly atheism hovered around four to five percent, throughout 200 years of American life, uh, at any given moment, maybe 95, 96% did believe in God, 4 to 5% did not. Hmm. Studies show that among millennials, now millennials are people under 30, mm -hmm. uh, atheism might be as high as 20%. Wow. One out of five, uh, and there, there have been articles called The Rise of the Nuns, N O N E S. Yeah. Yeah. When you say, you know, what religion are you, what God do you believe in? And, Many um, millennials will say none, hmm. and thus the need um, to uh, rise to the challenge and be able to explain and even defend the faith. Sure, and so you've authored a few of your uh, most recent books address kind of that, 10 Answers for Atheism, yeah. um, 10 uh, Issues that Divide Christians. Are, are we not supposed to just belligerently throw the word at them, or is it strategic? How does that work when you're talking about atheism? Great question. You, you know, it's been my privilege to interview, just like you and I are talking, a lot of atheists and um, of people of other religions. When I've written um, 16 books. I, I give God the glory. And one of the things that I've tried to do in the books is really get uh, the, the straight scoop from people and not, you know, caricature people's position. I, I sat down with Christopher Hitchens, one of the world's most famous atheists, twice. And I said, okay, um, dismantle Christianity for me. Tell me why you don't think it's true. And um, David Silverman, president of American Atheists, and uh, Michael Shermer, who's a well-known atheist on the West Coast, and a number of others. And uh, I've interviewed uh, Muslims, and I've interviewed Imams, and I've interviewed a lot of different people. And uh, one of the things that I've found, regardless of the person, is that people want to um, have relationship and not be preached at, sure. but they want dialogue. Yeah. And, and 1 Peter 3.15 that I alluded to says, um, be ready always to give an answer to everyone who asks a reason, dot, dot, dot. Do this with gentleness and respect. Hmm. Um, let me tell you what apologetics is not. Apologetics is not a right to be abrasive hmm. or to be um, condescending or anything like that. Um, do we have evidence for God? Absolutely. I would say philosophically, scientifically, historically, archaeologically, uh, experientially, psychology, by many vantage points, we can defend the reality of Christianity. So the evidence is on our side, overwhelmingly so. But at the same time, um, people aren't forced to Jesus. They're drawn. Hmm. Yeah. And, and um, it's been my privilege as an evangelist, because that's really what my heartbeat is. I mean, uh, the Lord's allowed me to do a lot of things, but I, in my heart, I'm an evangelist. Um, the, the person who appears to be farthest from the gospel, um, you, you can share with them when there's trust, honesty, and respect. Mm. So I would say to the Christians listening, and maybe you're concerned about you know, the people that are vehemently opposed to God and Christianity, just understand that person, the, the more vociferously they oppose the gospel, chances are they've been hurt or they've got some, maybe somebody they loved um, was diagnosed with a terminal illness and they're angry with God or something like that. Mm -hmm. So to draw them along and to really have uh, the right to be heard You've got to cultivate trust. You've got to cu cultivate respect. Hmm. And, and that takes time. Yeah. That ta we need good data, but we need uh, a good relationship for that data to, to transfer over. Absolutely. Well, we are running a little low on time, but I want to dive in. 
to the one topic that our viewers here on WTLW will get a chance to see from your Monday night um, talk, which really defended the Word of God and, and explained uh, how to validate both the Old and New Testament and how to be sure that we can trust the Word. And so let's dive into that just briefly. Sure. Um, well, you know, one of the big questions, is the Bible true? And so um, I did kind of an abbreviated talk. By the way, the, the talk that we did on the Bible under attack, the mm -hmm. assault against the Bible and the facts that verify Scripture's divine origin. That's a semester-long class at a college. But <laughs> and you consolidated it down yeah. to, to over an hour, a little over an hour. Yeah, basically the manuscripts that give us the Bible, Old and New Testament, uh, we believe there's great evidence that they've been preserved mm -hmm. and that they um, are of divine origin and that they can be understood. You know, three questions we need to ask about the Bible. It, has it been preserved? Is it of divine origin? And then can we understand its meaning? Hmm. And we talked a little bit about uh, the text, the preservation of the text. We talked a little bit about archaeology, and we talked about the testimony of Christ. And, um, you know, one of the interesting things, I'll, I'll tell you this quickly, um, the Bible ha seems to exhibit a lot of supernatural characteristics, mm -hmm. not the least of which is the ability to fulfill prophecy, mm -hmm. um, but also the ability to change lives. I mean, think about a book that makes honest people out of dishonest people, that makes virtuous people out of, um, you know, promiscuous people, yeah. formerly promiscuous, that makes um, selfless people out of formerly selfish. Uh, there's a story told of Billy Graham, and he's in London, and he's preaching, and, you know, the choir sings, come forward, be saved, you know, and somebody is up in the stands and says, um, hey, I want to go down there and pray. The other guy goes, yeah, me too. Uh, let's go together. And then one guy says, hey, before we go down there and pray and do business with God, um, I'm a pickpocket, and uh, here's your wallet back. <laughs> uh, you know, what message uh -huh. can sufficiently change a life sure. like the Word of God? Absolutely. So the Bible seems to exhibit a lot of characteristics that make it unique, hmm. and it tells us the story of Jesus. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Well, Alex, again, we're thrilled to have you. For all of our viewers that maybe want to keep up with you or to know where you may be um, or just how to pray for you, how can we do that? Well, thank you very much. Yep, my website is simply my name, alexmcfarland.com, hmm. M-C-F-A-R-L-A-N-D, alexmcfarland.com. And uh, I would ask people to pray for us. We are looking at uh, maybe in uh, 2015 bringing uh, an event or two to the Van Wert area. Uh, we do a tour for teenagers called the Stand Strong Tour, and uh, we would very much love to see uh, a chance to talk to the teenagers of Van Wert mm. about the Christian worldview. Well, I know that we would be excited to have you back, and so again, thank you for being on with us today. Well, thank you for the great work you're doing, Zach. God bless you. God bless you. We want to thank Trinity Evangelical Friends as well for having Alex to our area. And so you can watch that coming up on WTOW. Keep a lookout for Alex McFarland's talk. All right, Andy, take it away. Thank you, Zach. How important it is to instill a biblical worldview into our children right from the start and especially during those high school years. Well, Temple Christian School desires to do just that as well as provide opportunities for leadership and service. Last week, they inducted their second ever group into the National Honor Society. Jennifer was there for that special event. Their numbers may be small, but they represent a lot. Leadership, service, character and scholarship. The Temple Christian Honor Society inducted three new members this year, marking just the second year of the chapter's existence at Temple Christian. Um, I felt it was that important to honor our students and a, and a training background. That's really the key here is the training um, for our students. So this is our second year and uh, we have six students total right now. My goal here is to get about 10, 15 percent of our students in this program. Junior Brock Bowman and sophomores Abigail Durst and Kirsten Kirkendall joined current members Bethany Powell, Kelsey Kirkendall, and Lydia Shank. They are tomorrow's leaders, and that's the bottom line. And uh, sometimes they're going to take our positions, and we want to make sure, one, that they're trained appropriately. And um, secondly, we want to honor those who have reached a pinnacle in doing certain things. And we mentioned tonight's scholarship, we mentioned tonight's um, service, their academics, and those are very important things, and we want to honor those students for reaching that reaching that area in their life. Members of the National Honor Society are eligible for special scholarship opportunities. At Temple Christian, interested applicants submit an application, are required to obtain references, and are analyzed on the four pillars that make up the National Honor Society. 
So Jennifer, you spoke. Are you a National Honor Society member as well? I am. I am. I was inducted in my junior year way back several years ago, quite a few years earlier than these <laughs> wonderful individuals. Are all, any of you National Honor Society members? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, nope. not no. at all. I was never uh, nominated. I was nominated, also a right? National Junior Honor Society member as well. Now he's just showing off. <laughs> I am. <laughs> if, so I would, if I would have known we were doing this story, I would have worn my pin. Oh, uh, yeah. I How about over have, expensive? I still a card-carrying yeah. member. Yeah. So we have a dividing line here. You know, it's the National I Honor see how Society it is. versus the, the non. And the it's, it's, it's one of the bigger regrets of my life. <laughs> Didn't realize we're going to go quite set deep with that, Zach. Thank <laughs> you for sharing. Me let, me, let me go get some Kleenex for, for tissue, Zach as he, so. as he works through this. Maybe you can borrow Mark's pen for a week. Yeah, would that be all right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have and have not. So. You have to earn those. <laughs> Well, something is coming up next week that it doesn't matter if you're a National Honor Society graduate or not. You Thank are goodness. welcome. You are all welcome. You guys are welcome. We can even do this? <laughs> Little us? I feel so privileged. That's right. It is the time for... Dun, da, da, da. Pink shoe boxes. As, As shoe TV boxes. 44 once Thank again will be the drop zone in the area for Operation Christmas, child shoe boxes, something like... 13,000 shoe boxes came through our station doors last year, and every year the number amazingly climbs higher. Now, there are specific drop off hours, whether you're bringing in one box or 500 boxes. Zach, when are the times the drop off station will be open? Well, what a game I'm, show? I'm glad that you asked, Mark. Oh. It's right there on your screen. Oh. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Thursday, 10 to 7, Friday, 10 to 5, and then Saturday, 10 to 1 and Sunday, one, two, four. Also, a reminder of what not to put in your shoe box. No weapons. Seems straightforward. Yeah. No chocolate candy or any candy that can melt and no glass. I'll be the one going around inspecting for chocolate candy. Andy so. will got inspect your box. So, what are the items that you should put in the shoe box? Well, among the many things that are okay, the two requests are pictures and a lot of prayer. Huh. So, uh, when should we do the grand delivery of this special shoebox. Because this is not just a prop box. This is a functioning shoebox <laughs> that true. will be sent somewhere in the world. Some little boy is going to open it and say, I got pink shoes. You may have missed it, but earlier on in one of our productions, Jennifer actually promised that this would be filmed or taped as she um, delivered the shoebox. And so we're going to hold her to that. All right. I don't know when it's going to be. It's going to be a grand, exciting moment. <laughs> <Can't wait. laughs> well, as we decide on when to unveil this wonderful shoebox, we've got a great story for you from Rockford, Ohio, to Athens, to Cincinnati, to Detroit, via London. Yeah, that's the path Parkway grad Jordan Thompson has taken to get to the NFL. And while the rookie tight end points out NFL stands for not for long, he's making the most of his time in the league. Andy was joined by Jordan at Friday's Van Wert FCA meeting and found out Thompson's ascent is surprising many. You know, just uh, the other night, the general manager introduced me to a former player that played back in the 60s and had said, you know, I'm a guy that they brought in thinking, you know, I'd just be a camp body or an extra guy to have to, you know, to give uh, the veteran players some rest. And, and here I am today. I'm still, still hanging in there, still sticking around. And, um, you know, the last two weeks especially, um, I got called up to the active roster against the Saints and against Atlanta. And, uh, you know, we pulled out two wins in those games. And it's, it's, it's been amazing to, to think how far, you know, how, how much things have changed in the last year. In Thompson's first two NFL games, there's been plenty of come from behind drama, including a last second field goal in London. To be down 21 points uh, and then to come back and win it. You know, one of the things Coach Caldwell always says is you're never out of it. You know, keep the course and, uh, you know, see who wins at the end. And fortunately, we came out on top. London was a great trip. It was one of those things where, you know, it was awesome to be there. We got there on Tuesday morning early. And uh, so we had a lot of time to to visit the city, to check all the sites out. And, uh, you know, at the same time, as a, it was a business trip, too. And uh, fortunately, we got the win. And God has continued to show Thompson what it means to win in life. Just to believe, you know, to believe in him and believe in, in the course that he has planned out for my life. And, and one thing about being on Detroit is there are a lot of Christians, and we're led by a great Christian man and Coach Caldwell, and, and that shines throughout the entire organization. Um, you know, we, we have chapel services and Bible studies and so forth, and, and it, it's powerful to see, you know, out of a team of, we, I think we got 63 guys on our team, 
uh, 50 some will show up for, for a chapel service. And, and that's, that's organization wide. That's uh, our general manager, the president of the team, our head coach, our coaching staff and our players. And, and it, it's just awesome to be in that situation where you have a lot of Christian men around you and, uh, and, and striving uh, to do the Lord's and uh, serve the Lord. Thompson played two games on the active roster with the Lions is back on the practice squad now. Jennifer? Well, I have a question for you, and I have a question for you, and you too. I, I get to answer. You. I'm right. ready. Are we buzzing in? Is this okay. a game? Whoever's quickest gets the winning prize of the candle that's not allowed what, in the shoebox. What if I can read the question from over your shoulder? It's I actually have it in my hands. <laughs> can I see it? Yeah. Thanks. Work with a bunch of cheaters. Cable! Judge. <laughs> antenna. No, actually, I'm antenna. I cheated. That one was Here's working. the question, and it's for you at home as well, so you can play along at the very same time. There have been many changes lately to how viewers receive TV44. Please identify how your household views our station. Options are antenna, satellite, satellite plus antenna, cable, or other. What if it's more than one? Can you, you, you can, you can do more than one. Yes. Call that apply? The suspense is killing me. Jennifer, what is the purpose of this question? <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, this is really important um, for us, and we, we would really like it that if you received one of these surveys in the mail recently, that you would respond either by mail or you can email or call the information to us. The reason we want to know this is because as we are analyzing um, television viewership as a whole. We're always trying to look at the best way that we can reach you, the best way that we can work in the communities, and uh, we, we basically just need to know the information so that we can uh, make plans for the future based on the way that we know that you are planning to watch TV44. Because we want TV44 to be there for you. As you know, we are a viewer-supported TV station. By the grace of God, we've been around for more than 30 years, and we want to continue doing that. And many of you received this survey through uh, some literature you recently received in the mail about our uh, ongoing campaign 2014 as we seek to raise the operating expenses for the upcoming year. I'm going to take a moment to uh, say thank you to some of those who have already jumped on board with us for 2015 as our fall pledge campaign is currently underway. I think Andy and Mark, you may have a few names that you... I don't have any. That's Zach. Andy. I have some. I'd like to thank Andy, Zach Mark, for having all the cards. And Zach. Sometimes I go by Andy. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. You're welcome. Mike and Pam, thank you very much for mm. your support from Lima. Excellent. We've got a Ms. Marsha Brown from Ada. We thank you for your support. We have Joyce Zimmerman. Thank you so much for your gift as well. And James Lawrence from right here in Elida, not far from the station. We certainly thank you for yours. That I monthly gift certainly helps us. Mm -hmm plan ahead for what's going to come here at TV44 and the ways that we can uh, help uh, you. We truly are thankful for your dedicated giving and invite you to partner with us by signing up for monthly automatic deduction, which creates a stress-free, convenient way to partner with TV44 financially every year. You can learn more about this service by calling 419-339-4444 or look at the back of the campaign letter that was sent to you in the mail late last month. Also, you're always welcome to email us with questions about the campaign by writing contact at WTLW.com. Got a $50 monthly gift from wow. Finley. Thankful, very thankful for that. $50 individual gift from Delphus. Is that from you? Uh, no, I don't think that one is. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're certainly thankful for all gifts. Delphus, Herod, Columbus Grove, Wapakoneta. What a blessing to see how far reaching the uh, TV station is and what a blessing we can be for so many reasons, so many people. We'll also included with the latest mailing is that survey about TV44 that we mentioned. And as we, we kind of were joking about it, but really, it really is important for us. It's a simple question. It's a simple survey. We really would like to hear back from you. And if you did not receive one of these in the mail, well, you're so welcome to answer the survey. Just email us at contact at WTLW.com with your name, your location. We don't necessarily need your address. We'll take it, but we want to know where you live and how it is that you view TV44 antenna, satellite, satellite plus antenna, cable, or other. Just let us know. Quick reminder now how you can stay connected with us and with TV44 on Facebook. Look for WTLW TV44. You can also find WTLW on Twitter as well as WOSN. And find us individually at uh, Bauer Z, Matt Finkel44, Jen Beck44, Andy Lynch44, or Mark Hoots44. Send your prayer requests to prayer at WTLW.com. I note, pray 
that Bauer Z wants to be a part of the 44 Twitter club. Do it. I have made it well known it. that should I receive Do a it. follower from this petitioning here, then I will add the 44 to my name. And so you just need to let me know. <laughs> Tweet at me and tell me that you want the 44 at the end of Bauer Z. I will do that in 10 minutes. Not, and he does not <laughs> count, nor does Mark or Jennifer. I will make up an account. Why don't we count? Well, you're important to me, but. We're not okay. friends anymore, Zach. <laughs> Just because we're on a show with friends in the title, that doesn't mean we're not friends. We already are friends. We'll be friends forever, Mark. Oh, wow. I want to sing BFF. the Amy Grant song Thanks, Michael now. W. Smith. <laughs> oh, yeah, Michael W. Smith. <laughs> Amy Grant sang that? Forever. <laughs> Great, now we got to license the a song. Lord, uh, on that note, <laughs> we'll bring this show to an end. We thank you for joining us on Faith and Friends. Thank you in advance for your partnership with TV44 as we prepare for 2015. As a reminder, you can watch these segments. We know you want to watch them over and over and over again. Especially this one. Online at WTLW.com. Just click on Faith and Friends. And now we'll close with our verse, Zach and Andy. It's Mark 13, 3 through 8. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Certainly an interesting look ahead to what is in store for our earth, planet earth. But we have God that we can trust in and we are so thankful that he is ever standing and ever ready to save us. Goodbye.